Hi everyone, Leah here from EurekaCrystalBeads.com with another fun beading video for you. Before I get started, just a quick reminder to go check out the rest of our channel. And if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and notification bell and you'll always know when we're posting new content. Today's project is a really fun whimsical bracelet that uses seed beads, crystals, and either gem or diamond duos. I'm going to be using gem duos. And the colors that it features are from our newest released collection called Flamingo Beach. So let's take a look. Let's dive in. Let's see what I'll be using. So to start off, I have these absolutely gorgeous backlit gem duos. You can use diamond duos as well in this project, but in this case, I have these beautiful backlit gem duos. Okay, now I have a couple of different seed beads. These are 11, size 11 seed beads, and I hope the camera can really pick this up. They are the most flamingo of a pink you can imagine. They are just day glow, hot pink, uh, sort of lined in the hole, and they're kind of like a topaz color on the outside. They are so stunningly bright. You're going to love them here for this bracelet. Then I have a 15. It's a little bit softer of a pink. Now I do have an item here that's not in the collection and I just felt like I needed to add it to really pull out some of that deep, deep color in the gem duos. There are a lot of beautiful colors in this collection, blues, purples, and then of course all these awesome corals and pinks, but I needed a three millimeter bicone for this project. So I did grab one um, that was separate from the collection to pick up on the darker colors in here. So that is right here, and that is the ever-beautiful Siam Shimmer. And if you haven't seen that one in person, especially that shimmer finish, it's the most beautiful, deep, sultry red, and it just flashes the most fun, intense, bluey purple. And that blue really picks up on some of the other blues that are featured in this collection. Now, I also have a Tiara Cast toggle. This is featured in the collection as well. I did add a jump ring, though, okay? The jump rings are not in the collection. So if you have any jump rings hanging around or if you want to get some from us, we'll link it below. I did throw a jump ring on the toggle, so that way it would situate the toggle correctly on the bracelet. Otherwise, the toggle would sit a little bit funny on your wrist. So I just threw a little jump ring on there. As far as the other stuff I have, I have some... Fire line here, this is six pound, six pound fire line. I'm using crystal since my colors here are a bit light and transparent, so I don't want to have a darker fire line running through those where it might get seen. I have a size 10 beading needle. You could use 12 as well if you have that hanging around, but a size 12 will work just fine here. And then of course I just have my little snippers, so whatever you use to cut your fire line, you're good to go. As far as how much fire line I have here, so I'm using a good, healthy, full wingspan. You may have to add on in this bracelet, depending on how long you want to make it, how long you want to make it, but um, don't work with so much that you're going to spend more time pulling out tangles than you are getting beading done. So work with a comfortable amount, and if you have to add on, you have to add on. But I'm starting with a nice, healthy wingspan, and I pulled a nice long tail so that way it feels like I'm working with less as I actually work up the bracelet. So we're going to be using some right angle weave here. And I think this is a nice way to introduce yourself to right angle weave if you haven't done it before, because it's just going to be really clean, simple, flat right angle weave with size 11 seed beads. Um, we'll end up filling it in with a bunch of more stuff later, but um, I think it's a nice way to sort of get yourself used to sort of the, the twirls and whirls of right angle weave that tend to uh, trick people up. Okay, so uh, now that I've shown you everything we're going to use, let's get started. Okay, to start the first layer of the bracelet, and when I say layer, I mean uh, it's going to be actually the very center line of the bracelet. It's going to be the basic base, and we're actually going to be going back and forth, up and down this bracelet, adding layers as we go. So this is our first layer that's going to be the base of everything, and everything will be worked off of that. And we'll only be using two things to start, and that is the size 11 seed bead and and our gem duo. Now, these are two whole check glass beads and you always want to make sure that you check that other hole. So when we use it first in this in this first layer, we'll only be using one hole in each of the gem duos. You want to make sure that that other gem do that other hole in that gem duo doesn't have a little plug in there. Every once in a great while, you might find a two hole bead like a super duo or a gem duo where that second hole is a little bit plugged up. Uh, it just sometimes happens. Sometimes you can pop your needle through that second hole if there's a little plug. Sometimes you can't. It's, you know, it's, it's 
one in a few hundred where you'll run into that problem, but sometimes it can be your luck that it's one of the ones you use in your bracelet. And then later on, when that bead is already sewed into place, you can't take it out and replace it and you have a, a, hole, a second hole that you can't use. So make sure that when you go to pick up a gem duo to use it, give it a quick peek through that second hole or even test your needle through it just to make sure that you're not gonna have a problem later on. So to start off, I'm gonna pick up four of my size 11 seed beads, okay? I'm gonna bring it to the end of my thread, leave a tail that's long enough that you could stick a needle on that later and weave it in. For me, that's gonna be a few inches. And I'm gonna circle back through these beads, just like that, starting with the first one and then ending by coming out of the same bead that my thread is coming out of. And when you pull this all down, we're gonna to start to get a circle, but we're a little bit short of a circle. You can see how as you pull it, it doesn't wanna quite pull down into a circle. So what we can do is then pass through that first bead again, and that's gonna pull this down into a nice little circle. Just like that. Pull nice and slow. I know we're working with a lot of fire line here. So now you can see we get that nice little square. Okay. Now I like to work my needle around the bead, the, the little circle here two more, through two more beads just so that way the bead I'm working off of is opposite the one my tail is coming out of. Just a little habit. It's not necessary but I like to do that. It gets my tail a little bit more out of the way. I went through the next two beads in my circle just like that. Okay, so now coming off of that little, that little loop that we made, that little square of our size 11s, we're going to be picking up our next group of beads. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be alternating, making little, little boxes of four here, with making bigger loops that include seed beads and our gem duo. So what I've picked up is an 11, a gem duo, three 11s, a gem duo and an 11. And you'll notice the way I have them sitting is so I'm going through the same hole on both of them with them both facing the same way. What I'm gonna do is now circle back through the same 11 that I'm coming out of. So again, because we're circling back, our needle is coming out of the same side of that bead as the thread is. I'm gonna pull this down. So that's what we get, it kind of looks like two little wings. Now I wanna continue around this circle and I wanna head right up and I wanna exit out of the middle of those three 11s. So out of that second bead in that little group of three 11s. It's okay if they seem a little floppy or they're a little bit loose. This is all gonna get gone through later as we add in 15s to this as well. So don't worry too much if it's not super tight, it will get tighter later. And again, just check those Check those second holes. We're good there, we're good there. So head right back up. You'll notice the back of this particular gem duo is silver. This is a backlit gem duo. That's okay, because my silver is gonna sit underneath. And I really thought that the tones of the, the colors you see from the top really lent themselves really nicely to the gold. So that's what we got here. So now we're gonna make another little box of four. Now, if you're familiar with right angle weave, you're, you know that we simply add on three more 11s and circle back through the one we're coming out of. But if you're not familiar with right angle weave, because we're making a box of four, we always have to remember that the bead that we're coming out of is gonna be part of that box. So we don't have to pick up four new seed beads, we only have to pick up three new seed beads. So I'm gonna pick up three more of my 11s. I keep wanting to just hop off my needle here. And I'm gonna loop back around through the 11 that I'm coming out of. And we get another cute little box of four. Now, because I want to keep adding length to this little chain I'm making, I can't keep adding more beads until I'm coming out of the tip of that chain, which is gonna be that bead right at the tip. So I'm gonna travel up this little bead on the side and then across the bead at the very tip. So technically, I'm going to go through all over again the first two beads of the three that I just picked up. And you'll notice something I do to keep things tight is I don't go through 
both beads at once. Sometimes people do that and it's a little bit of a cheat method. It might save you a little bit of time, but um, if you go through both at once, your, your little loops and circles here can loosen up a bit and they won't get as tight as maybe you'd like them. So I go through one bead and I hold this between my fingertips and I give it a nice little tug, pulling in the direction of the hole that my uh, thread is coming out of. Now I'm gonna go through that top bead right there at the tip. I'll pinch this in between my fingertips. I'll pull this all the way through and I'll give this a nice little tug again in the direction that the hole is running in that bead that I'm coming out of. That's what's going to keep your right angle weave nice and tight. So now I'm just going to repeat these steps. So all I'm going to do is pick up the same set of beads I had here to make this loop, which is going to be an 11, a gem duo, three 11s, a gem duo, and an 11. I'm going to loop back around through the tip of that bead and then go back up into that circle. So I'm coming out of the middle of those three beads and then repeat this next box as well. Okay. So uh, if you need a bit of a review, you can just rewind a little bit back in the video. I'm just going to be repeating the same exact step. So just imagine that this little box of four here is this little box of four here. And you're just doing the same exact steps after that over and over and over until you have something that is the length of the bracelet that you want. Keeping in mind, that the toggle clasp is going to add some length to the bracelet. So if you want a finished bracelet that's seven and a half inches long, don't make this part seven and a half inches long make it more like seven or even a little bit less than that. Cause this is a pretty nice size toggle. Um, so make sure you go a little less than what you want your final bracelet length to be. Okay. I have made the length of the bracelet. And as far as this base goes pretty just as it is, but you can definitely see how gorgeous those backlit, gem duos are they're so stunning and what I've done is I've ended with one of my little units of four but I have not gone through the next two beads in the unit to end at the tip I have simply circled back around through the seed bead to form the little unit of four now the next layer is going to be nothing but 15s and we're going to start right here in this loop so I am going to go around this circle, but I'm going to plug in some 15s at those corners. So I'll pick up a 15, then I'll go through that circle there, I mean that seed bead there, give it a nice little tug, pick up the next one, go through the next 11. And while I'm here, I'm also going to sew on our clasp. So now that we're coming out of that tip 11, you're going to grab half your clasp and we're going to do a little loop of 15s and we are going to then loop back around into that 11 at the tip and then just continue on in our circle plugging in the, the last two 15s before we head back into the body of the bracelet. So I'm going to pick up, let's see, maybe about seven of these. I think that's about good. I'm going to go through the jump ring. And I don't have to worry about the opening and the jump ring because this is going to be pulled tight. So the thread isn't going to be able to slip through the opening because it's going to be a, a thicker um, bit of beads there. So that won't be able to go through. And then loop back around into that bead that we were coming out of. Now we don't have to worry about enforcing this right now because we're going to be back and forth to these ends a bunch more time. So we can do reinforcing as we, as we do that. Oops, there go a bunch of my 15s. Pull this down. We get this nice little loop. And now, before we keep going, we have to pick up that other corner 15. Don't get caught around your bracelet. So then head down. You can see how we've added one in that corner right there. And now we're going to add one more and cross over that bead right there. So that's what we have. And again, this loop is going to get reinforced. That loop right there. That will get reinforced as we get back down to these sides. So the next part of this is we're going to start to plug in 15s all in these little 
spaces right here. And this is going to tighten our bracelet up just a little bit, but it's also going to make all of these beads sit nice and cleanly. So we're just going to follow the thread path that's already there by going through that little C bead right there that was part of that group of three and then through the gem duo. So and we're going to go through the one after it and then normally to continue with that thread path you would then cross over the little cross bead there but we're not going to do that. We're going to be going straight down because we're going to plug in 15. So go through that one right after the gem duo. Now pick up a 15 and go straight through that side 11. So we have that little group of four there. We have the two on the side. So in this case, it's on the right side. We're going to go straight through it. And you can see it plugs it in nicely. Now we're going to pick up another one. And we're going to go through the seed bead right before that gem duo and then straight through the gem duo. You can see that when you pull them tight, they kind of sit in a little bit of a more straight line. Now, so again, to show you, we're gonna be putting in a 15 right here and right here. So on either side of that side 11. So basically we have that group of four here and we, we wanna end up plugging in a 15 <clears throat> before and after the 11 that's on the side. So to get to that next little space, we do have to go through the size 11 that's right after the gem duo. Then we pick up a 15, go through an 11, pick up a 15, go through 11, gem duo 11. So just remember that in your head, okay? You go through the gem duo and the 11 after it, and then you pick up a 15, go through an 11, pick up a 15, and go through 11, gem duo 11. So let me give you a nice close up here. So just to show you, we were coming out of, say, this gem duo. We went through the 11 right after it, and then we picked up 15, went through 11, picked up 15, went through the 11 and the gem duo, and the 11 right after it. So there's just those two little spaces that are going to get a 15 in one of them in each. So I'm going to continue on and I'm going to go down this line here all the way. When I get to the other side, I'm going to attach the other half of my toggle clasp exactly the same as I did the first one. And I'm going to head all the way back down this left side of the bracelet doing the same thing with adding in the 15s. So I will see you back in just a minute. Okay, so I've gone ahead and added all of those 15s into that base and you can see how much more straight everything is sitting and how those 15s really let the beads in those little groups of four sit nice and straight. And of course you can see how lovely that backlit gem duo looks especially when it's going to have these Siam shimmer crystals added in. So the next layer is going to be using 15s, 11s and our crystals. Now all I did when I got to the other side after I added in the last of the 15s is I just looped back around and reinforced this area. Not just once because again we'll be going back and forth so this is this is nice and strong already. Now a little tip I want to give you. It may seem uh, uh, when you're going down the sides of the bracelet that uh, it's getting a bit too tight for a size 10 needle and the reason it may seem that way is because oftentimes people try to take little shortcuts and what's happening is that the angle of the 11 is a little sitting a little differently than the angle of the hole in that gem duo and by forcing it through both of them at the same time, you're forcing that needle to go through the hole in that gem duo at not quite the same angle as the hole. So your needle is sort of dragging inside that hole. So if it feels like you're starting to get a bit tight, just go through one at a time because there, there is plenty of room in the holes of these beads for you to use the size 10 needle. So simply go through the size 11 seed bead on its own Don't get caught around your bracelet. And then go through the whole of that gem duo on its own. You can see it goes through 
nice and easily, but it will feel tight as if you shouldn't be using a size 10 needle if you try and go through them at the same time. So I know it may seem like a time saver, but you'll spend more time fighting to get through those beads um, than you will if you were just go through them one at a time. So now we're going to be utilizing the, uh, the 15s that we have here. So I'm going to travel through the next two beads. So for me, the next two beads after that gem duo are an 11 and then the 15 that we added in in the last step. So again, just go, try to go through one bead at a time. Otherwise, things can feel a little bit tighter than they are. Go through the 11 and then go through that 15. It's going to be a 15, a bicone, and my little three 11s here. Bring them all the way down to the bracelet. Disregard the three 11s because you're not going to go back down through them because they're going to be what stops these beads from coming off. They're going to be a little pico. You're going to go back down through just the crystal. And this might be a little awkward, but now bring your beadwork down to your mat and use your needle to pick up one more 15. And now go through that next 15 in your design. So you're skipping over that 11 that was right after it. And once it's my little fringe is made here, I'm going to give you a nice good close up and you're going to see uh, more clearly what I did. See? <clears throat> so we were coming up from one of the 15s that we had plugged in, uh, in the last step. I added a 15, a bicone, three 11s, went back down through the bicone, picked up a new 15, and then went through the next 15 in that base that we had done in the last step. So now I'm just going to work my way to the next little spot. So that just means I'm going to be going through the next 11. And again, don't try to go through the 11 and the gem duo because you're going to have that problem where it's going to seem like it's not going to fit. And you're going to get mad at me because you're going to think that I told you the wrong size needle to use. But size 10 is fine. Just go through the one, the two beads at a time. Or um, if you do want to use a size 12 needle, you can probably get through both at the same time. But we all know that a size 10 is a lot easier to thread. I'll go through that next size 11 seed bead. And the bracelet's gotten, it has gotten a little tighter. So you're going to have to really work your needle in there to make sure that you can get through your bead. And you're going to end by going through the first of the two 15s that are in that little space. Okay. We're going to do that same fringe again. So we're going to pick up one 15, a bicone, and three 11s. Bring it all the way back down. Go back down through just the bicone. Pick up a new 15. You can see on the tip of my needle there, and go down through the second of the 15s that was in our base that we had plugged in. And then sometimes you, like this one came down pretty nicely where my pico was sitting nicely like a pico. Um, sometimes there may be times that you have to just use your finger just to pop it into place so it sits in that little triangle shape that it should. But that's what we have. And later on, we're going to connect the tips of these picots. Uh, we're going to go through them and connect them to the the second hole in the, the gem duo. But for now, I'm going to go down the rest of my bracelet and I'm going to add in a little fringy in between each gem duo. I'm going to circle back around up into this area to reinforce, come back down and do the same thing. So I will see you back here for you and for you for you is just a minute. <laughs> okay, I've gone ahead and added all of those little crystal peacoat fringes down both lengths of my bracelet. And as I got back to the first side again, this was the last one that I finished. So I went down and then through the bottom and that's where I am now. So now we're going to pick up four 15s and we're going to turn around and head into the top hole. So because I like to work with on, on my right side since I'm right handed, I'm going to flip this around. And now that we've added those four, we're not going to be picking up any more groups of four. Now it's going to be groups of three. So I'm coming out of the tip of that gem duo and I'm going to go through the tip of the pico right there of that first little fringe. And I'm going to pick up three more 15s. 
and go through the tip of the next gem duo. And that is what we get. So I'll show you a little bit more of that so you can see how that's gonna look. We're gonna get this little bit of like a scalloped edge. And again, we're just using the 15. So I'm picking up three 15s coming out of the top hole of the gem duo. I'm gonna go through the tip of the next little pico, pick up three more 15s, go through the top hole of the next gem duo. See, I got it right there, gem duo. And this is what we get, this fun little scalloped edge. So um, some things to keep in mind. Um, I had started with uh, a nice healthy wingspan of Fireline. I did have to add on and I added on about another maybe three feet or so. Now again, this is just for the length of this bracelet, which is going to be about seven and a half or so. So again, I, I wouldn't start with so much thread so you can avoid adding on uh, that you won't need to add on through the whole bracelet because you're going to work with so much thread that you're just going to get frustrated by all the tangles that you might get. But it's up to you. Just know that uh, if you work with a little bit more than a wingspan or a nice healthy wingspan to start, you will likely have to add on thread unless you have a very, very tiny, tiny wrist. Okay, let me give you another nice little look at how this little scalloped edge is coming along here. And this part of the bracelet goes nice and fast. That beautiful little finishing touch. So the 15s in this bracelet really are kind of the start in that they're really holding everything very... Um, very secure. They're making everything look very neat. So those 15s made that inner row of little writing a weave boxes, made all those beads sit very nice and neat. They're making all of our, the tips of our gem duos and our little fringes, they're making those all sit nice and neat. So this is really bringing this bracelet together. So I'm just going to continue on adding the rest of this nice and easy scalloped edge, which after doing some of uh, those fringes and, and getting through all of those beads a bunch of times, you will be thrilled to end the bracelet with a step that is nice and easy. So I will be back in a minute to show you how it looks when it's done. All right, now that we're at the end of the first side, you might wonder, well, how do we turn around and get to the other side? So now that we're coming out of the top hole of that last gem duo, I'm going to pick up four 15s because remember how at the beginning of that first side we started with four right there so I'm going to pick up four my 15s and I'm going to go through the bottom hole of my gem duo here and again diamond duos can work uh, great for this as well but I do love these backlit these backlit gem duos okay and at this point the bracelet's gotten a little bit tight so I might have to just bend brace it a little bit just to get access to that hole. Oops, I was in and then it pulled right out. Doesn't that happen to all of us? Let's see, let's get in there. There we go. Okay, so you're going to go through. Because our goal is to work our way through these three size 11s right here. Right there. To then come out of the bottom hole of this other gem duo that's opposite the one we just dealt with. We want to come out of the bottom hole in the direction heading towards the clasp. So I'm just going to go through those three beads. They're just three elevens, that little group of three. Head right through. So you're coming out of the bottom hole of that gem duo in the direction heading towards the clasp. Now we pick up four 15s. Head up into the top hole of the gem duo, just like we did on the other side. And now we're ready to keep going down that side. And I think that's just such a lovely little ending to that bracelet. We have our little beaded loops and they have that nice little scalloped edge just follows right along on the outside of the end of the bracelet as well. So again, now we're picking up three 15s going through the tip of the pico. Three more 15s going through the tip of the next gem duo. And we're just going to finish off that scalloped edge on this side and I'll be back to show you what it looks like when it's completely finished. 
All right, this is our finished sunset shimmer bracelet using beautiful, beautiful backlit gem duos and 15s and uh, 11s, the all, and including the clasp, all from our newest launched collection, Flamingo Beach. The only thing I did add in outside the collection was these little Siam shimmer bicones and the, the two little jump rings just to make the toggle sit correctly on the bracelet. Um, but that Flamingo uh, Beach collection is definitely one you're going to want to check out. So that way you can make uh, the majority of this project uh, and many, many, many more. There are many more items than just the ones that you had seen here in this bracelet. But I hope you guys like this bracelet. It's definitely one that I would call intermediate beginner um, or maybe adventurous beginner. It's definitely not intermediate Full intermediate but definitely someone who's who's a beginner level and who's been doing a little bit of beading I think you're gonna be just fine and like I said it's also a good little introduction to a little bit of right angle weave some fun pico embellishments and that lovely scalloped edge so you're gonna get a lot out of this bracelet on top of ending up with a beautiful gorgeous bracelet all right folks thanks for watching make sure to visit us on over at eurekacrystalbeads.com for everything I used in this video and I will see you next time bye